Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is, I think, what did I just looked at the clock? It is 526. I had to look at the clock because I'm kind of um, in a hurry. So this is gonna be about a 20 or 30 minute vlog tonight. And the reason that I'm in a hurry is because I had to keep this a secret. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, tonight is Tanya Jean's surprise birthday party <laughs> that her son arranged for her. So Tanya's sobriety birthday was last Friday, but her birthday birthday is this upcoming Friday. So um, her son is throwing this surprise birthday party for her and um, Tanya is somebody that tries to figure out everything in the world and it was so funny because this whole thing kind of came to a head last night. So, um, and we're like fingers crossed hoping that maybe like I fixed it <laughs> indirectly. So anyway, um, so yeah, so I can't vlog for a long time. I'm actually uploading my drama video right now and my reality TV, TV video is uploading right now. I wanted to film more videos, but I had a really hard time falling asleep last night. So I slept in today. So I only got those videos done and then the vlog. Um, by the time I post this vlog, we'll probably be back from the birthday party. So um, I'm not worried about it ruining it for her or anything like that. But it's kind of funny how it all happened because um, so I knew like from the very beginning that the birthday party was being planned and um, Alex is upstairs right now. He's like laying down resting before we go to this birthday party. So anyway, um, he's upstairs resting with little Boo Radley. He's doing a little uh, TikTok in and things like that. So anyway, um, so I knew about this birthday party like, I don't know, two, two, three weeks ago, something like that when her son started planning it. So I saw her son on last, uh, on Friday and, um, I said something to Tanya in front of him about like, well, what are you doing for your birthday next week? And she was like, oh, I don't know. Like Nick said that he was going to, you know, like do something for my birthday or whatever. And so I acted real surprised and I'm like a good secret keeper. I know it's probably hard to believe, but I really am a good secret keeper. And so I was like, um, Oh, well, what are you, what are you guys doing? And she's like, wait, and he's standing like right there. And she's like, well, he hasn't really told me anything yet. And she, he's like, well, I haven't really put anything together. And I was like, okay. I go, well, I, I guess, cause I haven't heard anything about it. And if I haven't heard anything, I mean, I would hope that I would be included in it. Right. And he's like, yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. And so that was kind of the end of it. Right. Well, <clears throat> last night I was talking to Tanya and I said to her, she's a really hard person to surprise because she asks multiple people that aren't really that close. <clears throat> and so it's not like they would compare stories, if that makes sense. And she's always trying to figure stuff out, right? Like Christmas gifts and surprises and whatever. So I'm talking to Tanya last night and um, I knew that she had like uh, an appointment today and so I was asking her about her appointment and I said, well, what are you doing like the rest of the week and stuff like that? And she goes, well, tomorrow night, um, Nick is picking me up for dinner and told me to like dress nice and stuff, but I feel like he's like planning something and I didn't say anything and I said, I was kind of like paused and I go, why do you think he's planning something? I said, I thought he was doing, cause she, uh, when we were standing there last week, he said, she said he's doing something for me next Friday, like on her birthday. And I said, why do you think he's doing something for you tomorrow night? I thought that you said he was doing something for you next Friday. And she goes, um, no, Eric's going to take me to dinner on Friday, but tomorrow night, like Nick told me he's going to come pick me up and whatever. Right. And she goes, but I feel like something's going on. And she started laughing and we've been talking about these Harlan Coben movies, which I'll talk about in just a second. And I go, girl, stop trying to be a Harlan Coben because she's watched all of them. And I was like, stop trying to be a Harlan Coben uh, movie and figure him out the, the birthday mystery of Tanya Jean. I said, Nick's probably doing something for you, you know, taking you out to dinner or whatever. And she's like, no, I feel like it's more than that. And I go, why? And she goes, well, this one friend of hers, and I'm not like super close. I mean, like I know these people, like when I see them, I'm like, hey, it's so great to see you and stuff like that. But these are like, friends of hers from like back in the day that I'm not like real close with. And so she said this one friend of hers, she was like, when I asked her, she was like, I can't tell you what's going on. But that's not what you say. I mean, there were very explicit instructions in the text messaging that said, this is a surprise. Please do not even insinuate anything to my mother that this is going on. Right. And I'm like sitting there listening to it. And I'm like, oh my God, these people do not know how to keep a secret. Right. And so she asked her other friend and her friend just kept on like changing a subject every time like she would bring it up. So I'm like, in the moment, I'm like, what do I do, right? 
So I go, because I wanted to keep, I want it to be a secret for Tanya, because like Tanya will love that it's a surprise and that it will mean so much to her that her son went to these lengths to plan a surprise party for her, right? And so I'm like, Tanya, I really don't think there's anything going on for you. And she said, well, she goes, you would probably say that or something. She, I can't remember how she said it, but she was like, you know, whatever. She was, you know, but like they're acting really, they, she kept on saying they're acting weird. Like when I asked them questions, well, she hadn't asked me anything. So I was like, okay, here's my in. And I go, well, to be honest with you, Tanya, I go, I've been your, fr your best friend for 26, 27 years. I go, if I'm not invited to whatever Nick is planning, my feelings are going to be really hurt. And she goes, what do you mean? And I go, well, Tanya, I haven't heard anything about it. And I go, and if I'm not invited to it, I go, it, it, unless it's just like a family thing, but you're saying that these other two people are acting weird. And these are like her two like lifelong friends that she's known since she was like growing up and stuff. And I said, and if they're invited, I don't know why I wouldn't be invited and I haven't heard anything and now my feelings are kind of hurt. And she goes, well, babe, I wasn't bringing it up to like hurt your feelings. I'm like, yes, I got her, right? And, um... And so she's like, I mean, maybe he isn't planning anything, right? And I'm like, well, I mean, maybe he's just like, I don't know, taking you to dinner or something. And she goes, yeah, I thought that. She was like, but he's just like, everybody's acting weird about it and whatever. And she was like, but, and I go, well, Tanya, I wasn't invited. And I go, and if I wasn't invited, I wasn't going to say, you know, if I wasn't invited, then I haven't heard anything. I was like, if I wasn't invited, then my feelings are hurt. I go, you know, because <laughs> I want to be included in things too, obviously, that are to do with you. If there were anything to do with Tanya, by the way, of course, 100%, I would be invited, right? So, I mean, I've been invited to, like, every family thing that she's ever had, that her brothers have, you know, that, you know, everybody in her family, I'm always invited. I'm, like, part of the family. So, the fact that she didn't even think that is, like, so crazy to me. So, anyway, we talked for a while, and then I was like, well, I'm going to take a little bit of a nap, and then I'm going to get up, and I'm going to finish Fool Me Once, which was the Harlan Coben show that I was watching on Netflix. And she goes, okay. So I wake up like an hour and a half later and I've got a phone call from Tanya, I've got a phone call from her husband, Eric, and I've got a phone call from Nick and I've got a text message from Nick. And Nick texts me and he was like, my mom just sent me this and it was like, Peter's feelings are really hurt because whatever you're planning, he wasn't invited to. And he like put it in quotations and he put LMAO, it worked. Whatever you said to her worked or something like that, right? So I pick up the phone and I call Nick and I go, well, here's the deal, okay? You're not reading into this deep enough. I said, you're mom now feels bad because she thinks you planned something and I wasn't included. So she's like going overboard. Now the whole thing's a mess, right? And so I'm like, and now I feel bad because Tanya feels bad that I wasn't included in this, okay? That like Alex and I weren't invited to this and Nick is laughing on the phone, right? He's like, this is so hilarious. And he goes, well, how did it even get to that point? And I go, because so and so and so and so, when, when she asked this one person, she didn't say, oh, I don't know anything. She said, I can't tell you what's going on. Why would you say that to somebody? right? <laughs> I'm going to let her have it when I see her tonight. And he goes, I knew, he goes, I was trying to keep it such a surprise and whatever. I go, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. I said, I'm going to call your mom right now and I'm going to play it up like I woke up to these three phone calls. I go, your dad is sitting right next to her. I know they're saying they're watching TV. I said, I can't call him because then she'll be like, why is Peter calling Eric? Like, she'll put it, she'll figure it out, right? So I was like, when I call her, text your dad just to go along with whatever I'm saying. He was like, okay. Because if I texted him, then she'd be like, why is Peter texting you? And so... I was like, because he was like, all right, texting his dad about the birthday party tonight. So I was like, you text your dad when I call her. That way she won't think it's me texting him, you know, whatever. And so I'm talk I call her on the phone and I go, girl, so we're talking about like whatever. She had something else she was telling me. And I said, girl, why? I woke up to three phone calls. And she goes, what are you talking about? And I said, because Nick and I had this whole plan of what I was going to say to her. And I go, just go with it. And he goes, okay. He goes, I think this will work. And so I said, well, I woke up to a phone call from you. I said, and then like half an hour later, a phone call from Eric. And then I got a phone call from Nick. And she was like, oh. And I go, well, I talked to Nick. And she goes, okay. And she was being real careful, I could tell. And I said, did you, what did you need? And she goes, well, I just wanted to check in and, and see if you were okay. She said something like, did you talk to Nick? Oh, because when I talked to her earlier, she said, well, why don't you reach out to Nick and ask him, like, if he's playing something, why you weren't invited, you know? And so I said, well, I did talk to Nick. 
And she goes, you did? And I go, is that why Eric was calling me too? And she goes, yeah, because Eric felt really bad that you weren't invited. Eric knew I was invited. I don't even know why he was calling. Like, he got so confused in the moment. It's so cute. And he's like, oh, did, did Nick forget to invite Peter? Like, what? Okay, so last week Peter said he didn't know anything about it. Now this week, did Peter not get the, like, is he, like, he, Eric was, like, confused in the moment about, like, what was going on, right? And so that's why he was reaching out to me to make sure that I got the invite from Nick. So he didn't know that all this behind the scenes stuff was going on. So I said, yeah, I talked to Nick about it. And she goes, okay. She goes, so are you invited? And I go, it's not about that, Tanya. And she goes, what do you mean? And I go, and I'm like trying to play this so cool. And I go, girl, I don't want to ruin it for you. And I go, and these people shouldn't have opened their mouths. And she's like, well, what are you, what are you talking about? I go, it's not about me being invited because it's not something about, something that I would be invited to. And she goes, I'm confused. I go, okay, listen. I go, I'm not going to ruin what it is. I said, but Nick, because he wanted to do something special just between you and him, which he's doing later in the week. He's going to take her to go do something out to dinner later in the week, just the two of them. And I said, he wanted to do something just the two of you. And so he wanted to keep it a surprise. He, did, he, he didn't want you to think that, like, you know, we were all going out to dinner or whatever. He wanted you to think that it was going to be a surprise just the two of him because he knows how much you love just doing stuff, the two of him. I said, and so we were all supposed to keep it a surprise because it's like a special place and all this kind of stuff that will mean something to you. I said, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I said, but that's what it is. And she goes, well, I kind of already figured that out anyway. I figured it out it was either like a surprise party or Nick was just going to take me out to dinner on his own. And I go, well, that's why I wasn't invited and I didn't know anything about it and all these other people do because he had asked them questions about like where to take you and things like that. She goes, I said, it has something to do with back in the day, like, you know, you know, whatever. And she goes, oh, okay. So it's like something special from back in the day. And I go, yeah. And that's why he was asking them and I didn't know about it. And I wasn't invited. I go, but just girl, just go with the flow. It's a surprise. And she goes, okay. And so she's like laughing hysterically. And she's like, and here I am the bad person. Cause I was trying to make sure that you were invited to whatever it was. I go, girl, you ain't the bad person. I go, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, I shouldn't have ever brought it up or whatever. And she goes, well, I just wanted you to be included in whatever it was. And I was like, and so like, while I'm talking to her, I text Nick and I go got her <laughs> so anyway and Eric totally went along with it too because Nick had texted him and said whatever Peter says go along with it and so she's like telling him you know like as I'm talking to her on the phone so we're talking about other stuff and then she gets off the phone and whatever and so I called Nick back and he's like yeah you totally got her he goes I actually think you saved the surprise he was like because I think she was figuring out that we were doing something and he was like now she thinks I'm just gonna come and pick her up for dinner and that's we're gonna go do something special the two of us which he's like I'm doing that later in the week so um so I think I saved the surprise <laughs> so anyway so that's tonight we're going to do this uh surprise birthday party for Tanya and I'm real excited about that got her some perfume because Tanya loves her perfumes and I was like I I was like, I don't really know what to get her. And so I just started smelling all these different perfumes. And um, I got her J'adore Dior. I don't think she has that. Um, she wears like Flower Bomb a lot. And she has like three or four that she wears. But I don't think she has that one. So that's what I got her. And um, so yeah, so that's why I can't like film for a long time tonight. Because I got to get ready here in about, where am I at? I got to get ready here in about 15 minutes. So anyway, um, so yeah, so that was last night. And then I took a nap, dealt with all that when I got up, and then I finished Fool Me Once. A lot of people in the comment sections last night were kind of like saying the same things that I had said. Like, um, they started watching it and the acting was real bad. I will say this about, I've now watched two Harlan Coben shows. Because I ended up, after I watched Fool Me Once, I watched Safe. And... The safe the acting is better in than Fool Me Once. The acting's not bad. It gets better as you go. But it's like, it's better than a Lifetime movie, but not as good as like a major motion picture. That's the only way I can explain it. But that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me. I just thought the storyline was kind of corny when I started it. But I'm telling you, if you get like 20 minutes to a half an hour into it, like it gets really good. Every episode just builds on each other. So I watched that last night. I finished it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it would end a little different than it did. I thought something would happen at the very end that didn't happen. And if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I was kind of hoping for one of those kind of moments. Um, but it was fantastic. I thought it was really, really good. I kind of had it figured out a little bit, but not really. Like, I didn't have it figured out the way that it ended. The way that it all went down was, like, so great. Um, so I watched that. Tanya had told me I'd ask her, because she said she, she and Eric watched all of them. And I was like, which one's your favorite? And she said Safe was her favorite. I think I said that yesterday. And somebody said that they didn't like Safe in the comment section. So I was kind of, like, hesitant to watch it. Then I Google searched this, this article that was like, 
Harlan Coben Netflix shows rated. And Safe was number one, Fool Me Once was number, no, Safe was number one, Innocent was number two, and Fool Me Once was number three. So I watched Safe last night. Safe is about a girl that goes missing. Um, and her boy, her and her boyfriend go missing at the same time after they go to this party, and her dad tries to figure out the thing. I thought it was fantastic. I really didn't have any idea, and I, I like can kind of figure out mysteries and thrillers pretty early on. I didn't really have any idea what who it was until probably like the last two episodes, and then I had it narrowed down to like two people, and then like the last episode, you kind of know who it is through the whole episode. Um, kind of. Kind of not really. Um, but it was like a surprise ending too. I thought Safe was fantastic. I think they're both really, really good. And tonight I'm going to watch either Innocent. A lot of people in the comment section yesterday commented about, there's an Amazon Prime one that's called Shelter. So I might watch that one tonight. Actually, Shelter is part of like a trilogy. I think it, there's three books out. Somebody said that they wanted to buy the first, they went in and bought the books because they wanted to see how it, fin how it ended and they didn't like renew the series. Um... Shelter is about, like, a lot of his stories take, are, like, high school kids that have grown up, and I think Shelter is just high school kids. It's kind of a little bit like Cruel Summer, a little bit. They, they kind of give me that vibe. If you've watched Cruel Summer, they kind of remind me of those a little bit. Um, so if you like those, you'll like them. But it's a lot about, like, what happens, like, in their, like, high school years, and then how that, like, is carried into, like, their adult years, and, like, all the people they know, and it's it's... They're really well done. Um, and there's like 10 c series out of his shows. So I'm going to watch that. Uh, I did want to address a few comments that I got in my video yesterday. First of all, somebody said it was so funny. I think it was Megan because I was going to like read it, but I'm uploading a video on my phone right now. Megan said, I can't believe, because I was reading off the Goodreads, like the best books of 2023. And Megan said, I can't believe you voted for How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix when you dogged that book so bad. And I like read that comment and I was like, did I say I voted for it in the video yesterday? I must have. I don't know. I must have just said it quickly. I didn't actually even vote for any of the books in the Goodreads. Um, every year Goodreads, the app, they do like, they have like all these books that are nominated for each section and then you go in there and you vote for whatever book you want. I only read like 26, 28 books last year, so I didn't even vote on the books last year. I usually, I think I've done it like one or two years, but last year I didn't even, the 2023 one, I didn't even vote on it. What I was showing you guys yesterday was books on your shelves. It will say in there like books on your shelves that are nominees. That's what I was showing you. I must have said that like I voted for that book. I can tell you right now I wouldn't have voted for uh, <laughs> How to Sell a Haunted House without them dolls and pumpkin head and all that stuff. That book with pumpkin, was that the, the doll's name in the book? It was, that book was not good. I would not have voted for that book to win, trust me. <laughs> I like Grady Hendrix. I don't like Grady Hendrix that well. I don't even know him, you know? So that was the first thing I wanted to um, discuss. The second thing was, somebody left me a really interesting comment. I actually think this would be like, I don't know that I can actually get done with this in 14 minutes or 12 minutes or something like that. But somebody asked me about 12-step meetings and like they were confused about like, well, if nobody runs 12-step meetings, like, you know, then how do you pay rent and who opens the doors and things like that. So it sounds more complicated to explain than it really is. Okay. So I, I'm going to have to kind of, kind of go to the beginning. Okay. So if you, so there's like a, an organization that governs over I'm talking about specific 12-step programs, okay, that governs over that 12-step program. Everybody that works for that organization, okay, is basically elected by people in 12-step programs to work there, okay? They're, like, paid to work. There's, like, some paid people that are paid to do, like, office work and things like that to run certain, you know, situations and whatever. But those people don't make any decisions. All decisions are made by voting within and like a, like a um, common consensus of the group. So you take a vote and then the majority of that vote, that vote goes to like a bigger vote, like a district vote that then goes to like an, or an area, then goes to a district vote and then goes to a state vote. And then that state vote goes to um, like the international vote and things like that. So that's how any decisions are made within 12 step programs. Um, how a meeting starts is like, let's say if I wanted to start a meeting, right? There's like a whole process that you go 
through and you go through that main organization and you basically like have to fill out the stuff that you want to start a group there's a difference between a group and a meeting but that's too long to get, get into right now um you basically have to like go into this whole process of like where you're going to have the meeting what it's going to be called how you're going to start it and things like that but the person that starts a meeting or the people it's usually more than one it's usually a couple people that start a meeting they don't like it's not their meeting they don't own the meeting they don't run the meeting or anything like that right once the meeting is started it's every all the members meetings right it's like anybody that comes to that meeting they like it they're just as much a member as the person that started it. What happens is that um, you like take a group, there's usually like business meetings that you have where they'll like say, okay, like who wants to be the chairperson for January? And you raise your hand and you volunteer. Who wants to be the host, which is like you meet people at the door. Who wants to make coffee? Usually like the chairperson sometimes, usually have, sometimes you have a coffee maker, sometimes you have like the chairperson does all the stuff, sets up the, the chairs, whatever. So like at the beginning of the year, like like in my home group meeting, like you'll pick out who's gonna be the chairperson, like you unanimously, like, or not unanimously, you just like ask, like does anybody wanna to volunteer to be the chairperson for January? And then somebody volunteers. That person's January, then somebody February and goes through the whole year, right? And then there's also like appointed positions that are voted on. You vote on those positions. So somebody can say, I volunteer to be, let's say, secretary. But then you have to vote on that person. So the whole group votes on, is that person going to be secretary or are they not? And then that person serves like a, a certain amount of time as a secretary. And then there's also positions within that group that are bigger positions where like there's two positions. There's like, on, the only way I can really explain it is on like an area level and on like a, like a, like a national level and like a state level. It, it's That's really not how you describe it, but that's just kind of how I'm explaining it to you. And then those people kind of go in and they like bring things back, like news to the meeting of things that are going on, decisions that they're gonna make. We all vote on that. And then the like whatever vote, they take that to the next meeting, that vote is added to the, so that's how it works. The chairperson is the person that has the key to the building and comes inside, sets up the chair, the chairs and the whatever. The secretary is usually the person that sets up like the pamphlets and the books, takes the money and things like that. And then like, let's say if I'm the chairperson for January, at the end of January, whoever's the chairperson for February, I hand them the keys. And then they're the person that comes and unlocks the doors for the month of February. And then they pass on the keys to March and things like that. Um, so it's all completely self-run. There is no governing body. There's not one ever one person that says this is what's going to happen. It's always by a vote. And that group vote um, of what happens. To start a meeting, there has to be a group vote. Like the very first time you ever have a meeting, you take a vote of the people that are there, are we going to start this meeting? If you're gonna close a meeting and stop having it, you have to take a vote to close that meeting. Are we gonna move it to a different location? You have to take votes on all that kind of stuff. Everything is voted on. And so, um, it's always about the members of that. When I say that it's, like people are, somebody said that, like maybe state grants or whatever, there's no state grants. Everything with the 12-step program is run by and paid for by the members of that 12-step program, by donations. They pass a basket usually, um, and then you donate what you have. Some people donate nothing, some people donate a dollar, some people donate $20 or $5, just whatever, right? And then you donate that, and whatever you get from that meeting, so like, let's say if you're gonna have a meeting in like a church, that church will meet with the person that's the secretary of that meeting. The, the secretary is usually the person that's appointed by the people in the meeting and voted on that goes to wherever they're, that manages the money, manages the keeps the minutes and everything of every meeting. And they like give a little spiel to begin the meeting and tell like the minutes from the last and like, you know, who the newcomers were, who this, whatever. They're usually the ones that meet with the people like from the church or wherever and say like how much is rent and then they'll say okay for the next five years rent is going to be thirty dollars a meeting so then that would be like if there's four weeks in the month 120 dollars a month and so 120 dollars is paid by whatever we raise by donations from that meet from that meeting if that makes sense so we pay the rent from the donations that we get within the meetings the money is also like cut different ways and donated to this and donated to that within 12 step meetings and, and within like the organ. It, it's, a, it's very, very, it's like a lot more complicated than this, but I'm just like kind of like really making it very simple to explain it. So there's no outside money that comes in. We don't get grants, things like that. Somebody asked something about like, well then how do you advertise? So 12 step programs are um, programs of attraction, not promotion. We do not advertise. Um, that's why like when I see in movies and stuff, it'll say like 12 step meeting here, like that's 
that doesn't happen. I've never seen that before in my life. Um, I mean, if it does, I've never seen it. But they're programs of attraction. It's one of our traditions. It's programs of attraction, not tradition or uh, not promotion, which means we do not promote it, which means like I share my story. If somebody's interested, they say, hey, like you shared your story. Can I come to a meeting with you? I go, yeah, sure. But like I wouldn't like be standing out there with a poster board that says come to our meeting. Like that's not how it happens at all. Um, in fact, there's like a whole like there's a thing called traditions that are really about, like, they're not rules, but they're traditions that we follow. And a lot of them are like, we don't have any opinions on, like, outside issues as far as, like, politics, social media, things like that. We don't have, um, we, you know, it, there's a lot of, like, traditions that you follow um, to, like, keep it fully self-supporting and self-run. And that was one of the things that the original people that started 12-step programs put in place to make sure that forever and always 12-step programs would be fully self-supported, fully self-governed, um, and fully self-running. So there's never any one person in charge. Like that, that's very, very important to 12-step programs. You'll never walk into a 12-step meeting and have somebody say, this is my meeting. Like I run this meeting, I own this meeting. Like that, that's, if you do, get out of that meeting. Like that's, that's not a 12-step meeting. Um, and that's pretty much across the board for most 12-step programs that I've ever gone to. And I've gone to quite a few 12-step, different 12-step programs. Um, and so, um, I mean, in my career, I've gone to CA, AA, NA, Al-Anon, Adult Child of Alcoholics, OA, HA. I mean, I've gone to a lot of different 12-step programs and they're all run that way. So um, that's kind of across the board. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I think it's important, you know, to understand that. If, if you looked up and Google just like how are 12-step meetings run, <clears throat> who runs 12-step meetings and stuff like that, there's a lot of literature out there within our program that explains all that. There's like, like archives that explain how 12-step meetings are run and things like that. And, um, and one of the things that is always suggested like to us, like is when you become a newcomer, like after you have a certain amount of time. So like each service position that you have, you have to have had a certain amount of time sober to have that service position, like secretary, like chairperson, things like that. Chairperson, not so much, but like secretary, you have to have so much time typically, but that depends on the meeting and the group too. Like the meeting and the group votes on that. But like, some of the bigger positions that you, like you go to meetings outside of that meeting and you bring information back, you do have to have a certain amount of sobriety time. And those positions are usually like two year positions. So you hold them for two years and then you like somebody else is voted into that position. Um, so that no one person ever holds that position for very long for any one meeting. That doesn't mean that you couldn't like have that position then in another meeting that you go to hold that position at another meeting, right? Like you could do that like for different times, but you wouldn't hold that position for, well, I mean, I have had some people I've seen, do, it's not a huge deal, but anyway, that you would hold that for same position for different meetings. But, um, and so then what's recommended is like, okay, you start being active in like your own, like your meeting or groups, right? And then once you have a certain period of sobriety, like a year, then you go on and you do like one of the service positions that's like outside, right? And then you learn more about the program. And then there's another, once you finish that position, there's another position that you can go to and then you can volunteer to be that position. And then you know a lot about how the 12-step program works, right? And you meet a lot of people. This is how I met people for years, you know, in my Indianapolis area is that you meet people from other meetings when you go to these meetings where all the representatives of the meetings come to. And then there's other positions past that that you take. There's like area representatives, district representatives, things like that. There's like, you know, state conferences and all that kind of stuff, but it's all fully, it's really cool how it runs. In all honesty, it's very, very cool. You know, when you look at like, um, like governing bodies and things like that and to think that there's like this organization and I'm not going to say that there's never any fighting over decisions because that's just not true, you know, but mostly it's very like peaceful how it all gets along, you know, um, but to see how it all works, you know, and, and to know that this has worked for, you know, I, 80 years at this point, something like that is very, very cool, you know? And, um, so yeah, so I wanted to address that. If you guys want me to do a longer video about that at some point, I can. I thought it was an interesting question. It kind of came out of the blue and I hadn't like gotten that specific question before. So thank you to whoever asked that. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I mean, there's like, there's tons of history and, you know, archives. If you guys ever want to like just Google search, I'm sure it's all online that you can find out all that information and stuff like that. Um, about how it was all set up and how it was run and the first conference where they introduced the traditions I think was in 1951 or something like that and um, all that kind of stuff. It's very interesting when you read all about it. Just from like a history point of view, it's really interesting. I have friends of mine that are just like die hard into the history of 12-step programs. So, but anyway, thank you for asking me that. I think I'm like down to like the last couple minutes. So, I'm gonna get off here and start getting ready um, and get this video up. I can't tell if I'm at 29 minutes. I'm kind of right I am. So I'm just gonna make a very short outro. I love you guys. Have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.